Right. Okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> oh, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> Surely just one of us claps and then that'll do. Yeah. Three. Yeah. You do. You do it. Oh, You're well, a professional. Nice, powerful clap. Yeah. <laughs> three, two, one. I think Brilliant. Lovely. I think we Lovely. did it. Good job there. Um, so, I think the last time I saw you, you were in Mahiki, <laughs> and I think dancing on top of a table. Yeah, okay. Um, so, start us off talking about Henley that we all all love. Um, have you have you ever won at Henley, raced at Henley? Uh, so I've raced a couple of times with school. Uh, I started rowing at um, Hampton School, so I uh, raced the Temple there in my first year, and then the PE in my second year. Um, but I got knocked out on a Wednesday by Durham or for the Temple, but I was only like 17. I was just happy to be there. Um, and then when I, in my last year at Hampton, I got knocked out by St Edwards, uh, which one of my best mates was in the uh, other crew. So that's a bit gutting. He, uh, he holds that over, over me today. <laughs> um, but no, like I've always, always been a big fan of Henley. I think Henley was the sort of uh, event that got me into rowing. I think, uh, like my dad's won I think about 12 times, the, the bloke loves a pot hunt, so he's won the Thames Cup like I think like six times or something, uh, and as a steward there, so like we, we always used to go as a family, uh, so I've been going there since I was about 10, uh, and then that's sort of like where I first like fell in love with rowing, I, like, I really enjoy Henley even today, I think it's like a great event, and it's really well run. So, so um, you, you mentioned your dad, uh, you come from a huge rowing family and uh, a, a family that, that Absolutely loves rowing. Yeah. Were you were you like pushed into rowing or no. did you just stumble that way? I, I think actually my dad hates rowing. <laughs> Genuinely, I've, I've been out on a couple of boats with him, and he is the most miserable when he's rowing. Um, so no, uh, I don't. I was never pushed into rowing. I, I started actually as a, a triathlete, and my brother started as a swimmer, and he was a pretty good swimmer. Like he'd done some of the trials for London 2012 when he was like very young. Um, so yeah, like we both sort of did other sports. He did a bit of rugby, I did a bit of rugby, and then ultimately, like we both found our way into rowing just because it sort of worked. Like we both, we both enjoyed the challenge of it, and it's just like a, it's a sport where you have to work together. I like that teamwork element of it, and then just like a lot of our mates were rowing, so we just decided, hey, like we'll, we'll give it a go. Um, I think I started rowing before him actually. I think he started rowing in sixth form. Whereas I started rowing when I was like 14, 13, even earlier. I've been out with the boats with my dad, and that's where I sort of figured out how much of a miserable person he is. Um, but no, he's, he's, quite, he's, he's actually like, I think we both get a sort of our racing uh, attitude from him. Like, he is such a racer. I remember watching some videos of him back in the day, and he'd done a couple of fixtures with, uh, with a Cambridge boat. And at the end of it, he like pulled in the Cambridge Cox. Like, they were like side by side or something, they clashed. He like grabbed a little bit. And there's like a picture of him just like heading over to try to hit the Cambridge Cox in the head. Uh, so we never let him let him live down that. Um, but yeah, no, like, uh, um, so no, we didn't, we weren't forced into rowing, but it just sort of worked out that way. Yeah. <laughs> I love the sound of uh, your dad punching a cox in yeah, the head. Yeah. Well, I, I, yeah, I'm not, I think he said he was aiming for the straight man that somehow ended up hitting the, uh, hitting the cox. And I don't really know, but yeah. Um, so... From so you learned to row at school, um, schoolboy row. Any any club rowing on, the, oh, so, on the side? Well, actually, I, I learned to row at Walton. Um, oh, well, Matt Tarrant as well. Yes, Did you yeah. come across. Well, I think he. No, I think he rode at Weybridge actually. Oh, okay. Uh, Maybe, but same sort of. Yeah, yeah, same sort of club. But Morgan Bolding started rowing at Walton. Uh, a guy called Ollie Knight, Sam Mottram, who was a lightweight at the time, um, but like has been in the squad as a lightweight. I'm trying to think, we've got we've got a couple of like big names that, that come through that sort of Walton. Um, arena, yeah. should we say, but under Nick DeCarter, who's like one of the like one of the greatest coaches I think I've worked with in terms of like just the way he works with kids. He would never, he'd never like push you, but he'd always like know the right way to work and get the best out of you. Um, so yeah, like a lot of a lot of people start rowing at and, and then when I was sort of like 15, 16, I then moved to Molesy just because like uh, it was a natural progression for me. Like it was my dad's club, and uh, I'd always known known that I wanted to go to Molesy. Like it's. Uh, it's just a club that I have like a real love for. Uh, so was that alongside Hampton rowing? So I, I actually joined Hampton in sixth form. So oh okay. Um, so yeah, like I was rowing as a club and then got picked up by Hampton to, to go there. But my brother had been there from like him uh, from year seven all the way through. Uh, so yeah, I like Neil knew about my family and he was Neil Double, the Hampton coach, knew, and he was like quite interested in getting me in. 
Uh, so yeah, in the end, I left Mountain, which was really good for me. Like I think that program has made me who I am. Like it, it taught me how to how to race and how to race hard. Um, so yeah, like Neil's really good at pushing people. Did you? And you, I'm guessing you didn't end up with one of those curtain. Oh no, hoops. no. I think only there's only like 18 of them. I think it might be even less, like 17. They're actually like the best bit of Henley kit you can have because that is like they're rare. Yeah, if you um, see one, you know that's someone who's done yeah. stuff. Yeah, and in those years, I think it was 92, 93 or something. We were we were hot. So um, like yeah, those guys were were pretty good. So they've sort of set the standard for Hampton, I think. And then maybe maybe we've fallen away from that a little bit, but like. They're always around if you ever want to talk to them. Like Johnny, Johnny Sell's always available. Greg, like all of those boys, are still still about the club and will help you out. It's what makes I think Hampton really good. It's like the alumni system we have. Like I still go down there every now and then and like make sure the lads are doing all right. Oh, fantastic. So, yeah. well, it's nice to link back to to where you came from. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I think also like they really appreciate it. Like it's just nice to go what what I would consider like one of my homes. Like yeah, just the lads are really good and. It's like maybe, yeah, they just really appreciate us, so that's, that's cool. And just uh, following on the, the um, chronology, yeah, um, you, you went from Hampton, uh, got all your A levels. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I didn't do too well at A levels, uh, so I ended up like going through clearing. And it, as every rower knows, you, you most of the time end up at Brooks when you go through clearing. Um, so, so I got sort of forced into going to Brooks. Uh, which was funny, like it wasn't my my like aim because my brother had gone there and I was like I want a bit of bit of space from that, you know, I didn't want to be like just constantly following him, him about. Uh, but yeah, just in the end like ended up there. Um, just got a few things wrong with my A levels, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, yeah, haven't we all? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, but no, uh, like I really I really enjoyed the club at Brooks. Like I was there for for three months, I think, and then yeah, I did Bucks Regatta. And then I got given the boot by Emery, um, which was fair enough. Like I, I wasn't doing particularly well on the ergo, uh, and he just had a big squad. Like I don't, I yeah. don't think Henry got it wrong. Like I, in my position, I probably, would, if I was in his position, I probably would have dropped me as well. Um, so yeah, like, so I can't, I'm not going to be able to tempt you into slagging off Henry. <laughs> uh, no, never. Like I think, I think he's built an incredible program, and you can't really, um, like, judge that. I don't think. I think like. Yeah, the man is uh, very good at what he does. So yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say anything bad about him on on YouTube. But, uh, <laughs> no, I don't, wouldn't really risk it. Don't want him turned up at my house. We don't live too far away from each other. So, <laughs> so I reckon he'd, he'd have me. But no, yeah. Um, and then so so coming out of Brooks, what led you to the the Para GB mm. squad? Um, so I've been my one of my family friends is a guy called Pete Shepherd. He's otherwise known as like Shep in the GB circles. He does a lot of the development and under twenty three stuff. I haven't heard of Shep. I'm you not? not not quite into the GB oh, cer no. circles. <laughs> Shep's a bit of a legend. Making my way. <laughs> um, so he'd been actually down at Molesy quite a lot as well, Shep. So he knew me really well, uh, and we sort of thought I would classify when I was younger because, like, I'd been born with cerebral palsy. I should probably explain why I classify. Um, so I was, <laughs> I was born with cerebral palsy, which is um, yeah. And the form of it, it's like hemiplegia, so it affects the right side of my body basically. But I was lucky in that it was very mild. Um, so I didn't really know until I was like two or three that there was anything wrong with me. So I was just like struggling to walk, or I wasn't walking as quickly as other people. Um, so yeah, in the end, like, my parents took me to hospital, did a brain scan. Uh, and we, yeah, we found out like I had, had like, a little bit of a brain bleed on my left side, which then was affecting the right side of my body. Um, but yeah, like nothing major. I don't think I... I've ever been affected as it uh, by it as a kid. Like my parents would just throw me out into the world, and that was, I think, like a really good philosophy. Like I remember playing football when I was like eight or nine, and be bloody useless. And like my dad would still be like, "Nah, mate, you're going out and playing." Um, so I think that's like also what helped me like uh, get over it. Like no one, no one ever treats you differently. You just get on with it. And I think like when I went to Brooks, I never told Henry that there was anything wrong with me. I just was like, I don't want to. I don't. I can't be asked. To deal with that and I think that's like if I'd probably been a bit clearer with him he probably would have maybe like tried to keep me on or or been a bit more interested in what I was doing or understood a bit more um, but yeah no like uh, I'm really lucky that yeah I found my way into the Paris but basically I've been rowing Upper Thames after getting dropped by Brooks uh, and a couple of the old Brooks boys were rowing there at the time who were good mates with my brother um, and they yeah so I just went down to Upper Thames with them which was good fun 
Um, and then Shep called me and was like, mate, I think you can classify for the paras. I was like, okay. I wasn't really sure at the time. <coughs> Sorry. Um, and, um, it's alright, I'll fix that in place. Yeah, it's fine, sweet. Um, and, oh, uh, so yeah, I wasn't really sure I classified, uh, but you don't, you don't want to be the person that rocks up and is like, they're like, nah, mate, you're, you're not actually like, uh, there's nothing wrong with you, like, just get on with it. So I was a bit skeptical of doing it, especially when I was younger, I just didn't want to do it. Uh, whereas when I got older and got sort of like forced out of Brooks, I was like, well, look, I'm either going to have to give up the sport I really enjoy, or I've got to do this and like, I like Sage. So I went down to, to Caversham with, uh, with Shep and I met a guy called Tom Dyson, who at the time was the chief coach of the Paris. Uh, and he's like, he's probably like one of my people, one of the people I've met that's like been most like inspiring, I guess. Because he's like, the way he works is, is, is pretty good. He's like got such a commitment to the team. Uh, and he's built this like Paris squad into to what it is today, which is like legendary, I think. Most people, especially in the PR3 group, which is the group I'm in, like nobody touches us and I think that's because of what he's built um, so yeah I met him uh, and then went through classification passed with loads of points so I sat there like Jesus Christ that was actually, that's actually a fair amount wrong with me I was like that's, that's good to know uh, I'm not like just cheating the system um, and then yeah like ended up becoming part of the Paris squad which is yeah been brilliant ever since really I've loved every minute of it. You got into the Paris squad yeah um, what's the I, I, not without trying to like pry out your program and yeah. leak it to bloody France. Yeah. Um, well, what's the training like? Do you well, go I mean, down and you have a whole day training or? Uh, so yeah, we probably don't do the same amount of mileage as the Olympic squad, but uh, we do like pretty similar stuff and it's really good that we train with them. But um, so most of the time we'll do like a, a long water session, then maybe an erg and then maybe weights uh, and like try and do that again. And then like we'll do a, probably a, like a, um, a test erg on a Wednesday. Uh, weights and then another three session day Thursday. Uh, I think it's like three three two three three two is what we run uh, through the week. So like three sessions, three sessions, two sessions, three sessions, three sessions, two sessions. Yeah. Um, with pieces on the Saturday. Um, so yeah, like we we try and mirror as much as possible what the Olympics would do. But I'd say we maybe do it in a different way. Like we we have a lot of different modalities that we use because obviously like when you're working with people who already have like weaknesses or, or issues you've got to be a lot more careful around um, how you work them and like how hard you can work them and that's something that like Tom's very aware of and I wasn't at the start I was like well, at Brooks I was doing 20k 20k like, why can't I do that here and he was like yeah just, just wait and see like build your way through the program uh, and like I realized actually if I was feeling good you can put more into the sessions for the same mileage uh, like you can just put more into the session, um, so that's what like I ended up doing. And like I just found that I was progressing uh, loads better. So yeah, like I think the program's really good. I think that's why being centralised at Cavisham is, is why I think the margins are so big. It's just because like firstly we have the opportunity to train with the Olympic squad, which is a big win. We get all the expertise. Like we've got physiologists, um, so I think S and C, like physios. We've got so many people around us that like enable us to do so well. Um, and then, yeah, like the food on site is wicked as well. Like the two chefs are, are legends, um, Martin, Martin and Krishna, two heroes. Um, so yeah, like we've just got everything on site that makes it really easy to perform. Like the hardest, like when training is the hardest part, that's perfect. Like it's when the stuff around your life is, is difficult and that's like, that's what we try and avoid. So that's why we have such a good setup. Um, but yeah, no. So you, met, you mentioned food there. That's a yeah. topic I absolutely love to talk about. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've posted some recipes on the, on the rest <laughs> of my channel. Yeah. Um, so what, what's, what's the food like? Do you breakfast, lunch, dinner there? Or breakfast, uh, second breakfast, third <laughs> breakfast, I imagine? Uh, so you can, you, we used to be able to, we used to have like a cereal sponsor and that was much, like that was really cool. But we lost the cereal sponsor. So you used to be able to get like cereal first breakfast. Um, but no, we just do second breakfast and lunch. But um, like second breakfast, you can have whatever you want. So you can have like eggs, bacon, sausage, beans, bagels. I think he does like birch as well. There's a whole like different selection of, of stuff you can get. Um, and then lunch like alternates all the time. But like the guy is, is wicked at what he does. Uh, I love good food and uh, <laughs> this man can create some magic. So uh, yeah. I, I think sometimes like lunch is the highlight of your day when you're going through like it's raining outside or whatever it's like middle of December you're having a, a rubbish session or whatever like being able to come in like um, he's always like very chirpy as well he loves to talk to you so like that's, that's really nice. nice yeah 
to like come in, and grab your food or whatever, and it, yeah, it just makes it so much better. I can, I, I can imagine. It's <laughs> always nice to have a meal cooked for you. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so, uh, I interviewed Matt Tarrant about a year ago. Yeah. Um, he said that uh, after his sessions at Brooks, he would eat an entire tube of Weetabix. <laughs> yeah. Can you eat an entire tube of Weetabix? Oh, it depends. <laughs> Should we do that as like a race one day? Yeah. <laughs> Get everybody down, we'll do, uh, do an entire tube of Weetabix. No, um, like, I think uh, you can obviously eat a lot, but it's making sure they're like good calories. Like, uh, that's what the chef does like really well, is it's always good calories. Like, you're never just eating for the sake of eating. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like, I probably could. I'll give it a go when I, come, when I go home, right? I'll, I'll have a crack and then send you the video. Um, yeah. To, to ask you about is uh, you, you see in your races um, in the in the in the four yeah uh, you get up and you continue to be up and you just keep winning by absolutely colossal margins yeah um, I've I've, uh, I've got a few questions but regarding this but yeah go on, hit. Um, what what keeps you motivated like I know a lot of athletes will be for example, Mahe was posting on Instagram the other day about how him and I can't remember who it was, but some other sculler, uh -huh. they were always alternating who was on the top of the podium. Yeah. And that's what pushed them. But what what uh, what pushes you if you're winning by so much, what gets you up every morning? Yeah, I don't, it's an interesting one. Like you get asked that question a lot and I think uh, most of the time it's internal things, like you always I always look to try try and P B on the erg or whatever because ultimately that's only you and then we we like, I think a lot of our like strength comes from being the best in the world with the whole group so like we've got a number of people who don't make the boat or whatever um, but they would make any other nation's boat and probably be coming like second in the event um, so I think that's why we, we we always train so hard is because there's like that determination from internal factors that enable us to like keep pushing. I also think like uh, we talk a lot about winning well, not just winning, winning well, um, and that includes like the culture we try and foster um, and just the way we operate. Like I think we've always sat down and said like winning's not enough. Uh, so like when we're when we're up by like whatever a length or whatever, we're always trying to like be like no okay we need more we need more. I remember being sat at like the 750 and the guy behind me, a guy called Ed, was just shouting more, more at me. I was like, yeah, okay, here we go. Um, so, yeah, you just gotta, I guess, you're just trying to hunt the, the best possible race. I think this year at Worlds, uh, maybe in the pair as well, we didn't quite nail the final. Uh, we were only a second off the world record and we'd, we'd gone well under the world record in training. Um, and I like, I think I've got that race a little bit wrong. So like that haunted me. I was like, oh Jesus, I need to get the, the fours race right. And uh, so like I just like went to bed and I was like, right, I'm gonna nail this next race. And I think that's why the fours race race went so well and why we like broke the world record. Because I was just sat there like, man, I've got to got to pull something out here because because that that pairs race wasn't wasn't my finest work. Um, but no, like yeah, I think also just wanting to to beat the four that was last year. I think that's always like the thing that, yeah. that's worked in my head. It's like you always want to improve year on year. And I think we always have, like, especially post Tokyo, the two new people we've got, Ed and Frankie, like, they've just changed the whole dynamic of the crew. Like, we are so much better at doing the day-to-day -day stuff that when we come out and race, it, it's just another day for us. Um, and that's something that's happened through every cycle. Where, like, I think uh, every year they've only had one person return from a previous Paralympics every year. So, like, if you think that competition coming through, it's like there's always going to be elite. Like, if so, potentially, like either me or G might not make Paris because we've both done one, done one before under that sort of like trend. Uh, I think think like G's pretty solid as well. So I don't. I think there's no chance she won't make Paris. But um, yeah, like uh, I think that internal sort of competition has, has always made us push on. Um. So to to dwell on that. Um selection process yeah seat racing yeah Erg scores same sort of stuff every club has uh yeah seat racing Erg scores telemetry uh i mean we even use like i think british rowings have changed the way it works a little bit and that we use like cultural stuff so like how you work within the crew 
Uh, what do you bring to the group? What do you take away from the group? And like, there have been a couple of people who've missed out on selection because of those factors. Oh gosh. Yeah. So it's, the name and shame. No, I, I'm not going to get involved in that. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, I think, um, yeah, we just run the same sort of facts as every club does, um, and yeah, like it works. I think, I think the minute you you set a crew. Uh, and you allow them to think that, that they're always going to be that crew, you, you just lose any sort of um, what's the word? Like hunger, hunger to stay in that crew yeah. because you know you've got that seat, so you just don't, I don't think we would work as hard. Like we've been winning by over 12 seconds for the last six years, however long I've been here, um, but we, like, we're never told like you're the crew or like you're amazing. They're always like, nah, you could have done this better, that better, that better, that better. And like we always do that in our own heads as well, or at least I do, I always think like, yeah, great, we won, but oh, I could have done this better, I could have done that better. Um, like every race, at the end of it, I've sat there and been like, well, I've got this wrong, yeah, I've got that wrong. Like, I think that's why I've been able to keep going every year, like keep improving, um, just because you never think it's perfect. Uh, that's, it. that's a, a really proper champion mindset. Well, I wouldn't say up, that. You're sitting there with your gold medal <laughs> from uh, Tokyo. Yeah. And still wanting more. No, I get told off for like taking the medals off. So like most of the time after the presentation or whatever, I'll, I'll take the medal off and it's like a thing in your own head to be like, right, well that's in my head at least. I go like, well, that's that done. Like now I'm on to the next thing. Like it's just constantly trying to improve. And also I don't think I'm ever, I've ever done it because I wanted to win or I enjoy winning. Like, I don't enjoy winning. I enjoy like pushing myself um, to like new levels and then also working with the group. Like I really enjoy the journey. It sounds like proper cringe, but like the the journey is is really enjoyable. And like working with good people, like I, I wouldn't, I like, yeah, I just I, I, I love rowing for a job. But it's wicked. Um, uh, it, yeah, I, I, I can see it being being best job in the world. Yeah, in a way, yeah. Worst yeah. job in the world. As yeah, well, exactly, yeah, exactly. You have grim days and, and great days, but um, yeah, overall, like it, it, I feel like honoured to, to be a part of the team. And, yeah, just like especially considering my dad was part of it. So like, and my mum, to follow that legacy is wicked. Um, so yeah. so do, you, do you think you'll ever reach a point where you're, you're fully satisfied? Yeah, I don't know, like, after after this world, I had like a bit of a, a mental low. Um, I was like, uh, I went to do some work outside of it, uh, and I really enjoyed that. And I think sometimes, yeah, as you say, like it's difficult to sit there and, and win by, by a lot and think like how much of this is because of me and like how much am I actually contributing could somebody else do it and, like I think yeah so it's taken me a long time to be like um, to feel as though what what I bring is is worth it or like and so so yeah like I think you always sit there and think is the grass are greener on the other side like could I get a proper job you have your, your Friday drinks or whatever, you get a bit more time to socialise. It's not a 24 uh, 7 job. Um, so, yeah, like you always have those thoughts, and um, but I think we find ways as a squad to get people back and then bring them back in. And um, like nobody, nobody thinks every day is amazing. Um, so, yeah, like, we you always have thoughts about stopping. I, I definitely will stop after Paris just because. I think uh, if you get like too stuck in the rowing world, it's a bit weird. Like if you get too stuck in Cavisham or whatever, when you try and leave and get a proper job, you, you sat there with your degree you've done what twelve years ago and very little work experience, and then you come back out and expect like you winning stuff to be worth it to employers. And sometimes you know, it's, it's like I, I, I if I was employing someone, I wouldn't go, "Wow, you've got." Apparently, a gold medal like that was you're wicked. Uh, I, I want, I want experience. I want other stuff, and yeah, yeah, you just don't want to be like stuck in rowing and then be spat out. I guess always go down the Pinson pathway <laughs> and try and get in with the BBC. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure that's for me. I'll be honest, um, but no, yeah. Uh, I've got two pieces of uh, <laughs> your wisdom. I'm going to try and pry from you. Yeah. Uh, firstly, a purely selfish note. Mm -hmm. um, Take an average club athlete, probably yeah. four seats of a second eight. Yeah, okay. Um, how You're not straight from the first eight? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually. Yeah. Um, well, maybe, maybe you could provide me with the knowledge I need. 
We'll um, just both go beat our Dave. That'll sort it out. <laughs> I do. <don't. laughs> We're going to have to edit this out. <laughs> um, so, um, what 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 should I be doing? How should I be turning up to training? What what can I do every? Is, is there just one thing I can do every day that's going to egg me closer to to? Yeah. So that's stroking my first date. Um, I don't really know. Uh, I've, I've been lucky that I've been pulled along by a lot of really good people, to be honest. Um, no, I think just like Jürgen had this philosophy that like more is more. And I, I think that's something that's always like stuck with me throughout my rowing career. Is like even, so like that doesn't mean just like more miles. It means like looking after yourself better or making sure that when you get to the next session or the next day, you're, you're in better nick and, and you're just constantly trying to get through the training program. Um, like I th- I think a lot of the guys at CAV that do well are just the people that just do the training program. Like, there's no, there's no miracles to it. There's no magic. It's just doing the miles and like doing the weights and, and staying fit. Um, yeah, like, I don't, yeah, I would say there's no, there's no secret, secret to it. Just, it's just hard work, and I think that's why rowing's wicked. Like, anybody can be good at it if you're willing to put the time in and you're willing to put the effort in. Uh, obviously, like, you're in a different situation because you're also working alongside it. And that's, I think, actually incredibly cool. Like a lot of people wouldn't be able to do that. Like, you see the guys at Cab, we train full time. Like, no, we have no other issues in our lives. We just rock up, go training, go home. Um, and like a lot of the club rowers you see in the UK are doing so many other things. They've got so many other things to balance. They've got kids or whatever. They're working, uh, and they're still going out there and rowing. And I think, like, it'd be really easy for me to say just train more or whatever but everybody's got to have that, that life balance especially if you're like a, a club rower who's, yeah, who's got other things in their life so well, what would I say is like the, the magical thing more steady state I think that's what Jürgen more steady would, state. I think that's what Jürgen would make me say I'm sure is that not what Matt said or Matt, did Matt say like, um, oh, did you ask Matt he, he uh, gave me well I, I asked him and it's what I'm just about to ask you Yeah. Um, we know that a load of juniors watch my oh, channel yeah. Nice. Um, Hello. Mainly from Westminster next door. <laughs> really? Um, so, uh, what would you say to a youngster uh, just just starting out in rowing? What what advice can you give them? Uh, I'd probably just say like enjoy it. I think that's the main thing that's like driven my rowing career is, is I enjoy it. Like I enjoy turning up every day and just working with people, working with my mates, um, and that's like meant that. In order to work with my mates, I knew I had to work really hard because I wanted to row with them and they'd be in the first aid or whatever and you'd want to be in that first aid. So I think just like, just really enjoy it. Make sure you enjoy it first. Don't work yourself too hard. Don't worry about things. And then when you're like, oh yeah, I really love this or whatever, then start like pushing yourself and trying to figure out where your limits are. Uh, especially if you're young, like you'll make so many improvements from when you're like, when you start out as a 14 year old and you go to 18, like you'll make huge leaps and bounds. So just... Just enjoy those early stages. Make sure you like set it in your head that you love the sport, and then everything else will sort of take care of itself. I find. Um, yeah, like uh, I was never very good from when I was like fourteen or whatever, and then I I slowly figured out how to row at Hampton, and then got a little bit better at the Power Squad because they were teaching me how to like do proper mileage on the earth. Um, and yeah, like if you're just constantly progressing because you enjoy it. It makes it so much easier than whereas if you're like having to slog your way through an erg because you're like not really not really enjoying it or not really fully into it, it's it's a lot harder to, to make those improvements consistently. That's uh, what my advice would be. That's I think that's great advice. <laughs> um, I'll pay you later. <laughs> um, so just uh, I'm interested to know about the life of an athlete. Okay. Um, yeah. How do you have time to sleep? How much do you sleep? How like how? What's your sleep duration? I think uh, oh, I've I've like slept like ten hours consistently for um, for like a couple of days when I came back from Worlds. So like uh, a lot, I would say. I'd say like rest is like the most important factor in staying injury free or being consistently consistent training. Um, so yeah, like a lot and making sure that you're you're eating the right stuff and, and drinking lots is is important. Not drinking the wrong stuff. Um, but yeah, like. Um, um, sleep, sleep. sleep. Yes, how, long, yes. how long do you sleep? Uh, yeah, so like, yeah, I think like, make sure you like sleeping over eight hours is probably important. But I don't know, like you work, so I guess that's probably quite yeah, difficult. I... But then, like a lot of people nap. I know, so like, like a, a two p.m. nap's perfect. Uh, you, you've got a sleep room at Cavendish. Yeah, we do, we do. Yeah, we've got a little bunkhouse, um, which is cool. A lot of the guys use that. Yeah, especially if they've been out or whatever and they come in, do their first session, have a little kip, and then. 
then come come back out for a second one. Yeah. Oh, I do. Um, so I've I've got a few quicker fire questions. Yeah. Um, Are they from the gram? Um, we've got some from the gram. Okay, uh, lovely. And the, I think I've got them all in my head. Yeah, really? That's that's um, funny. that's good. I, I can bet. So, sculling or sweep? Uh, sweep always. Love sweep. Uh, I'm so much better sweeper than I am sculler. Uh, and like my dad has always been a sweeper, so just like yeah. runs in the blood. Yeah, exactly. And I think my brother's like my brother's a rubbish sculler, very good sweeper. Uh, so yeah, I'd, I always sort of wanted to be a sweeper. Um, would you rather? This is, this oh, is one of, It's a would you rather have? I think it was tennis rackets for arms or tennis rackets for legs. Tennis rackets for arms, surely, because then like, you can do stuff. You can play tennis. You'd be wicked at tennis. You would be insane at tennis. Yeah, so probably, probably, yeah. Um, what's Who's it, asked that? <laughs> what's it like to row with James Fox? Yeah, lovely. Uh, an absolute dream, my hero. Uh, yeah, my king taught me all I know. <laughs> um, Nash, any quick fire questions? I mean, I think... Or, or just general questions? Um, best 2K advice. Oh, that's an interesting one. Uh, don't go off too hard, probably. Like middle, middle of the middle of the two K is always a bit where you either PB or don't. So like never going off too hard. Probably mine. You can you always a negative you can always, splitter. Yeah, I am big negative splitter. I think like all the best two Ks I've done have been negative split. Uh, but you see some guys like Josh Bug. Honestly, I've never seen them. He can go off for like a one one twenty for the first 500 and just sit there and be fine. I'm like, what? Oh, that's amazing. What? And then onto then well then he goes down onto pace or whatever. But I'm just like, Jesus. It's like robotic, just unreal. Um, so yeah, like a lot of people have different ways of doing it. Uh, like I've seen Morgan Bolding, like loves a good little sprint. Um, he's a man who like, yeah, who, who, who loves a sprint at the end. Um, whereas I'm probably more of a like middle K, you get to the K marker or whatever and you try and push it on from there. So you go a bit earlier. Uh, but yeah, lots of different ways to do it. I think like anything that works. Um, yeah. 2K, 5K or 30 rate 20? Oh. I've got to go 2k, it's over quicker. Uh, 5k is a bit long uh, and 30 rate 20 is also a bit long. So yeah, probably, I'll probably go 2k unfortunately. <laughs> Anything that gets me off the air quickly. Uh, do you listen to music? Yes. Your musica? Yes, a uh, big musica. Yeah. What's your go-to oh. 2k hype song? Uh, I've gone through loads of stuff like Kano, big fan of Kano. Um, like, I've started listening to Queen a bit. Ooh. Yeah, I don't know why. Just um, like that's I like the beats a, of that's it. That's on a lot of Vesta playlists. Is it? Yeah. Um, that's, they've got some good tunes. Uh, I'm trying to think what the rogue is one I can can't. Dave as well, big fan of Dave. Uh, so yeah, those those sort of sort of vibes. I alternate a lot because like you don't want to listen to the same music over and over again. Um, just just had a, a thought when you said Dave of just Dave love Dave. Dave love Dave on the, on the beat. And so go go to recovery food. What oh. what what would you? Well, it's sponsored by SIS. So I probably got to say like SIS Rego. You know, um, <laughs> favorite recovery. I food. do like a bit of Rego. We do like science and sports. <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, thank you. Um, um, oh, favorite recovery food. I don't know, anything that like Martin cooks is always pretty good. Uh, or, or like, yeah, I'd probably go like relatively unhealthy. I remember like after Worlds, I was, because I hadn't eaten anything really unhealthy, I was just like cracking through the cake. So mm -hmm. yeah, whatever you, whatever you fancy really, depends if you're going again or not. Uh, if you're done for the season, beers. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, fantastic. Yeah. Um, thank you very no, much for really coming was. down. It's been an absolute pleasure to speak with you. Yeah, and, uh, it's been a pleasure to speak with you. Uh, I've made it in life, I'm on a YouTube channel. <laughs> Hi, mum. She, is she a fan? Uh, yeah, I'm going to make her a fan, I said. <laughs> <so. laughs> oh, Rachel, yeah. Sorry, Max, Rachel, Rachel, Max. Hello. Uh, nice to meet you, Rachel. <laughs> yeah, sweet one. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, final one. Um, who's the better interviewer, me or Crossy? Oh, that's a tough one because I'm a Hampton boy. I can't really sag <laughs> up Crossy, I can't lie. I've had some good chats. Uh, who's got the better YouTube channel? It's got to be Max Akinda, I'll be honest. Oh, Ludum aren't going to be happy with yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sorry Ludum. <laughs> oh no. Um, but brilliant, thank, yeah. thank you so much no, for no coming worries. down and good, good luck with the, the next season. Yeah, yeah, we will see. Uh, I'm sure the, the four will be doing excellent stuff. <laughs>